When competitive alpine skiing began, the European athletes dominated the downhill races for decades. Especially the rivalry between Switzerland and Austria kept the skiing world on the edge of their seats. This was until the 1970s, when a group of five Canadians started mixing the rankings up. Canada, a country stereotypically known for maple syrup, ice hockey and its people's politeness, but also a country with 291 ski resorts. Alpine skiing in Canada was popularized in the 1920s with the founding of the Canadian Amateur Ski Association on December 20, 1920, which evolved into Alpine Canada the Canadian governing body for alpine ski racing that just celebrated its 100-year anniversary. The country's first larger competitions were held in the 30s, but it wasn't until the late 40s when the sport reached wider masses. During the Second World War, the Canadians trained a number of soldiers in alpine skiing, and after the war, the equipment became available to the public as war surplus. The low prices of the skis and clothes lowered the entry bar to skiing and led to more interest in the competitive nature of the sport. Canada's first breakthrough in the international competitions came with Lucille Wheeler and the 1956 Olympic Winter Games in Cortina Tampezzo, where the athlete won a bronze medal in the downhill race. Just two years later, Wheeler won gold at the World Championships in both the downhill and the giant slalom races. While the Canadian women's team with Anne Hechtweit, Nancy Green, Betsy Clifford and Cathy Kreiner managed to win quite a few medals over the next few decades, the men's team didn't make an impact in the ski racing world until the mid-1970s, when the crazy Canucks kept the skiing world on the edge of their seats. The story of the crazy Canucks begins with Jungle Jim Hunter, born in Shanoan, Saskatchewan, a town in the middle of the Canadian prairies, Hunter first played ice hockey before picking up alpine ski racing at the relatively old age of 11. During his early ski racing career, Hunter hadn't much success and mostly ranked 50th or higher, until a life-changing interaction with Olympic medalist Nancy Green that motivated him to become an Olympic athlete. Due to his home in the flat Canadian prairies, his training was quite unusual. He, for example, improved his position on the skis by standing on top of a truck while his father was driving it. He practiced starting on a ramp in the barn and while driving the tractor on his father's farm, Hunter was doing jumps on the seat to strengthen his legs for 14 hours a day, managing 1500 jumps in one mile on the tractor. Thanks to this unusual workout and hard training, Hunter managed to secure a spot on the Canadian Alpine Ski Team in 1970 and qualified for the 1972 Olympics in Sapporo, Japan, where he placed 20th in the downhill, 11th in the giant slalom and 19th in the slalom. But back in 1972, the World Championships were held in even numbered years and were combined with the Olympic Games every four years. In the World Championships, the combined event was held as a paper race back then that combined the results from all three events. Because Hunter competed in all three of them, he managed to win a bronze medal in the World Championships combined that year. The second member of the Crazy Canucks was Dave Irwin. His ski racing career began more traditional compared to that of Jim Hunter. Growing up in Thunder Bay, Ontario, where he learned skiing at the age of three at his father's ski resort. At the age of 17, Irwin was selected to be a member of the Canadian national ski team. While originally starting in slalom, Irwin successfully switched to downhill, in which he won a race in Schladming in 1975. With Ken Reed and Steve Poborski, two more members joined the Canadian national ski team in 1973. Steve Poborski was born in Toronto and started skiing at the young age of two years in Craigleth, Ontario. At the age of 16, Poborski joined the national ski team 
and one year later he made his World Cup debut, scoring two top 10 finishes in his first season. Ken Reed was born in the United States but grew up in Calgary, where he learned skiing from an early age and at eight years old participated in his first competition. In 1975, Reed won his first World Cup race at the downhill in Val d'Isère. Completing the original Tracy Canucks was Dave Murray. Born in Vancouver, Murray joined the Canadian national ski team in 1971 and made his World Cup debut the same year. Although he struggled to make any real impact during his first seasons, he was selected to compete in the 1974 World Championships in St. Moritz, where he surprisingly placed eighth. In the following season, Murray also collected his first World Cup points when he raced to the sixth place in the combined event in Megève. Even though some members were competing in the World Cup for some years, the Crazy Canucks rose to fame in the 1975-1976 season, when Reed became the first North American to win a World Cup downhill event and Irwin followed with a win just two weeks later. But not their success caught the attention of the skiing world, but rather their style on the slopes. The Canadians were known for daring runs and barely making it across the finish line. January 9th, 1976 was no different and it was on this day that the name Crazy Canucks would be born. Serge Schlang, a French journalist and co-founder of the Alpine Ski World Cup in 1966, came up with the name after an especially daring run by Dave Irwin. The athlete recalled the event about 20 years later in an interview. I slipped on my side, got my feet the other way, slipped on the other side, put both feet up against the hay bales, skied along for 20-30 feet, got one foot back on the snow, rocketed across to the other side of the track, ran over a cameraman and went through the finish. It looked spectacular. I placed 18th. Mr. Lung, a huge burly man, looked down at me and shook his head, saying, Crazy Canuck. And that's the first time I heard those words spoken. The following day, at the second downhill on the legendary Lauberhornappart, the Crazy Canucks were responsible for another legendary name that is still being used today. While Jim Hunter finished third and achieved his best result in a World Cup downhill event, both Ken Reed and Dave Irwin crashed in the same turn after the Minge Kante. Since then, the turn is known as the Canadian Corner. And to this day, more athletes from Canada crash in this turn than from any other nation. Shortly after Wengen came the 1976 Winter Olympics in Innsbruck, where the Crazy Canucks became world famous. While Steve Potworski didn't race in Innsbruck because of an injury, three of the four Canadians at the start finished in the top 10 of the downhill event. Ken Reed later recalled the results as bittersweet. We felt we could have done better but we knew as a team that we had um, done our country proud. As an athlete, I had uh, a bit of regret that I hadn't taken that little extra risk to try to push for the, for the medal. And that was the difference between first and fifth. These results were nevertheless a major upset in the skiing world. While most nations like Switzerland and Austria had multiple coaches positioned all along the course, the Canadians had to work with a lot less. We put radios at the start, we put a radio at the finish, the coach was on the course. We weren't like the other teams that had multiple coaches all over the course. We just helped each other. And when we saw something that would help each other, we told each other. We, in essence, were racers, coaching racers. After the Olympics, Jim Hunter, who arrived in Innsbruck as the best Canadian skier, recalled that the mood in the team changed. While the others were a tightened group, he felt as if he stood on the outside. The following season, Hunter retired from the Canadian national ski team. The following seasons showed that the Crazy Canucks were only just starting. Despite many injuries, equipment challenges, coaching changes, media and political pressure, they continued competing for the top of the podium. On February 11, 1978, in Les Uches, Reed and Murray finished first and second respectively, achieving Canada's first double win. 
In 1979, Todd Brooker joined the Canadian national ski team and became the sixth member of the Crazy Canucks, collecting three World Cup wins and another four podiums. One of those wins was on the Hanenkamm in Kitzbühel, widely considered the most difficult downhill course in the world, where the Canadians won four times in a row from 1980 to 1983. At the 1980 Lake Placid Olympic Winter Games, Steve Poporski skied to a bronze medal, making him the first male Canadian athlete to win an Olympic medal in alpine skiing. Two years later, on March 6, 1982, the four remaining original Crazy Canucks raced together for the last time, because Dave Murray and Dave Irwin retired from the World Cup. The same day, Steve Poporski, who retired in 1984, became the first North American male to win the World Cup downhill title. Ken Reed retired in 1983. From 1974 to 1984, the Crazy Canucks won a total of 39 World Cup podiums, including 14 first place finishes. Besides their pioneering role in Canadian alpine ski success, the Crazy Canucks were also one of the most liked ski team on the World Cup. European ski fans would cheer for them despite being the competition for European athletes. This phenomenon was explained by Dave Murray shortly after he retired. The Europeans could be fans of ours without compromising their nationality. The Austrians couldn't cheer for the Swiss and the Italians couldn't cheer for the Germans, but they could all cheer for us. After their careers in the World Cup, the crazy Canucks took different paths in their lives. Jim Hunter decided to ski professionally on the World Pro Ski Tour. Now, you might be asking, wasn't he skiing professionally for the last five years already? Well, no, because back then, the World Cup was an amateur competition. This meant there was no money involved. This was not necessarily the idea of this, but because athletes that earned money in their sport weren't allowed to compete in the Olympics, the FIS decided to keep the World Cup a competition for athletes with amateur status. Let us know in the comments if you would be interested in a video talking about this topic more in depth. On the World Pro Ski Tour, Hunter won the first downhill race held in the competition. For the 1988 Olympic Winter Games in Calgary, Hunter organized the Olympic torch relay and he later hosted his own radio show and provided developmental coaching for athletes and teams from Calgary. Steve Poporski worked as a sports newscaster in Salt Lake City and later was a commentator for NBC at the Olympic Winter Games of 2002, 2006 and 2010. Poporski was also on the bid committee for the 2010 Winter Olympics in Vancouver and he is involved in several different charity organizations. A similar path took Ken Reed, who became a broadcaster for CBC TV Sports and launched the Breath of Life Ski Challenge a charitable organization that raised over $3.8 million for cystic fibrosis research. Reed co-wrote a novel called White Circus about his time on the Canadian national ski team. From 2002 to 2008, Reed was the president of Alpine Canada. Under his direction, the athletic results and financial support improved dramatically. After his resignation, the Olympic medalist continued working for ski and other sports organizations on a regional level. His son Eric is currently a member of the Canadian national ski team. Dave Irwin, famous for his spectacular crashes, continued skiing in different competitions recreationally. At the same time, he worked as a marketing manager and helped to bring the Women's World Cup to Canada. In 2001, the former Canuck suffered a traumatic brain injury on a training run for a skiing competition. The crash put him into a coma for three days and recovery was slow. While Irwin mostly recovered by now, he has lost 20 years of memories that according to him, he will never get back. Dave Murray became the director of skiing at Whistler Blackcomb and founded his own ski school in 1988. After a battle with skin cancer, Murray passed away in 1990 at the young age of 37. 
In Whistler, the downhill course is named the Dave Murray Downhill. It hosted World Cup races and was used in the 2010 Winter Olympics and is considered one of the best downhill courses in the world. Murray's daughter, Julia, is a former cross skier who competed in the 2010 Olympics in Vancouver and won a silver medal at the 2011 World Championships in Deer Valley. The Crazy Canucks influenced the skiing world long after their retirement. Chris Kent, Todd Brooker, Felix Belchick, Eddie Podivinsky and many more Canadian alpine skiers were motivated by the success and impact of the Crazy Canucks. Another one of those athletes was John Cusera, the first male Canadian athlete to win a downhill event at the World Championships in 2009. In an interview, he acknowledged the importance of the Crazy Canucks for the Canadian ski team. When you look at what the Crazy Canucks did to put ski racing on the map in the 1970s and 80s, they are probably one of the biggest reasons we have accomplished what we have to date. Thank you for watching this video. This is the first time I recorded with my new microphone, so I hope the audio quality is a lot better than before. If you enjoyed this video, please let me know with a like. And if you want to see more videos in the future, make sure to subscribe to this channel.